the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy day. Hi folks, I'm sure you are well aware of this pandemic that has been sweeping the nations and the deaths that have come from it, the harm that it's caused, the diseases that it's caused, the outbreaks. And there are times when it can seem like, where is God? But I'm here to assure you that it will one day end and it's all part of the grander picture. There's four things you can do to better help yourself walk through this. One, rest that he is in control, holds all together, and that it's all part of the greater picture. Let us read Matthew 6, 26-34. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all's glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow was cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Other passages for study would include Job 12.10, Colossians 1.15-16, Hebrews 1.1-4, and Romans 8.18-19. 8, Two, make sure you're gathering together and encouraging each other. I know it doesn't seem like much, but believe me, your words have an impact. You assemble yourselves together. Hebrews 10.25 tells us to do this. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Acts 2.42 They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the breaking of bread. Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And 1 Thessalonians 5.11 The third thing you can do is to find healthy ways to distract yourself. Needed cleaning, find some hobbies, reading, maybe educate yourself on what this condition is and how you can better protect yourself and what it is and how it acts. Um, listen to something that encourages you, builds you up. Even a video game, make sure that it's a good video game, that there isn't anything ungodly in it, that it won't cause sin. But find a healthy way to distract yourself. Practice sound medical guidelines, which is the fourth thing that you can do. I know it's a given, and I know it's all over out there. You work in a place, they tell you, wear a face mask, wash your hands. And you know what? The scripture even tells us to obey the laws of the land. And you know what? When you are doing that, you are protecting yourself and others from the condition, and you are making yourself a more ready witness to witness to them. I hope this all encourages you, and I hope you all stand strong, and may God richly bless you.